independent. And I've seen this story, various versions of the story, be spoken about many, many times. And maybe it's the same thing being regurgitated, but I think I want to offer like a different perspective on why I think this may be an issue and why it's happening quite often. So headline is courtesy of the independent. It says drunken Brits could be banned from Spain's Balearic Islands. And if you scroll down to the main story, it says drunken revelers could be banned from the party island of Ibiza under new um, plans being considered by the local officials to crack down on antisocial behavior by tourists according to reports tourists who break strict rules could be blacklisted from notorious party hotspots at the Balearic Islands such as the Magaluf in Mallorca and the west end of San Antonio in Ibiza um Wham, what's that Wame uh, Bwaza the island's head of tourism suggested that holidaymakers who break strict rules could be ordered to go home speaking to local media on Monday after meeting yesterday of the commission of promotion of civism um, in tourist zones Mr Mr. Boaza said it would be it would depend on the specific quote unquote crime or interfraction committed, whether or not badly behaved tourists could be sent packing. And this should be no surprise for most people who go to like those type of places to holiday. Um, I've never really been around the kind of like I went to what, what's that thing called? I went to Fort Ventura, but that was outside of the kind of peak party season type of thing but i've never been to Balearic islands when it's like full-on you know um season time let's go let's have it bloody blah 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 but i have been on planes um where people are going to those type of things like you know in the in in the airport where people are going to those type of flights but i've never actually been on the flight itself and one thing i noticed i was really surprising was just how much turn up the airport is because i've never really been like to an airport when it's like that type of time so i've never really known that to be a thing i always assumed everybody treat airports like i do where i treat an airport similar to how i treat like a police station even if i'm going there um voluntarily i'm still a little bit worried you know i'm still a little bit nervous i'm still a little bit scared whatever it may be and i'm treating it with some level of reverence and respect i'm not going in there thinking it's just a fucking job interview or i'm going to hang out with some friends i'm thinking of it hey if this goes left and i answer these questions wrong even if i'm not guilty or anything i could maybe end up in jail so that could be one of those kind of um you know cautionary tales of be careful to not go to places and voluntarily because you might end up in jail and you're there for like the next fucking 60 days or something i don't know i've just always kind of treated airports with a level of respect where i kind of know that when i'm going there i'm going there primarily to get to my location it's not a place for me to have fun it's not a place for me to kind of fall around and joke and do whatever if anything i'm so preoccupied so nervous about getting there on time so nervous so preoccupied about checking that i've got my passport you know double checking triple checking you know, I, I can't I can't count the amount of times I've gone to the airport and I've actually checked maybe more than ten times on the train itself if I've got my if I've got my passport just in case. Okay, cool. Just in case I got I haven't got it, I can rush back and get it. But whatever, and I know I have it in my pocket, but I keep checking anyway. So all those nerves, all that anxiety is something that I've always kind of held within me, especially when it comes to airports, because in my everyday life I'm quite lackadaisical. I, I you know. I, 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 I'm kind of laid back I'm a little bit Jamaican in that way people kind of use it as a flipping insult in terms of like you know don't worry don't be afraid because every little thing is gonna be all right so I don't want to have that same perspective when I go to the airport because the punishment is far greater you go to the airport late you miss your fucking check-in time the gates close and you have now having to pay like crazy money to get another flight out right very rarely if you miss a flight can you get the flight for under what you paid it's always going to be double or triple what you paid and if it's a low budget airline like a Ryanair or an EasyJet going to a bait place in Europe the last thing you want to do is pay 500 euros for it you know what I mean you're not going to fucking the USA you're going to Berlin you're going to Paris you're going to Madrid you're going to Barcelona the whole reason why you're going there is because they're not too far from where you are and obviously the price isn't too shabby so I don't want to be a put in a position where I have to overpay for a ticket so I go abide by the rules I get there for four hours ahead of time like a psycho I have fucking movies downloaded on my phone movies downloaded on my laptop I watch and listen to those things or podcasts or read a book or whatever or people watch and just chew until my flight gets there and if i need to sleep i might sleep on a plane or my sleep again when i get there but i'm not doing the whole like oh i'm gonna get there and get turned up so when i do go to airports and see people who are going to these locations and they're turned it's pretty mind-blowing because you don't ever see it usually right you've seen people got treating an airport like they'll treat a train station as if they're going on a train to fucking liverpool street you're like wow man i didn't know this was possible and one thing that i remember surprised me that even when i came back from the from the Fort Ventura it's seen the amount of people that were getting the in-flight food and drinks 
because I've never seen anybody order it because I'm usually going again to random places to do my little techno tourism thing but a lot of people I'm flying with at that time especially during the weekend it feels like a lot of people that maybe kind of travel back and forth from the countries maybe for business maybe visiting families or doing what I'm doing a little bit of tourism a little bit of techno tourism so they're usually going to the place to have their fun they don't need to get lit on the plane but on the way back from Fort Ventura the amount of people that were ordering cocktails and drinks and beers and wines and food on the plane was wild like it took that car normally in any other flight that i get on no one really orders anything they might see the odd person here and there grab a coke or something or a coffee but that car that they had in the middle of ryanair it took ages for it to get to the back where i was sitting because it was just like every row was ordering something like this and that and you know as per usual people on those type of flights they don't seem to have the ability to just eavesdrop on other people's um order choices or to see what the air stewardess is saying in terms of what's available and every time they came to their row oh can you tell me what the options are can you tell me what the options are it's like bro that person was just in front of you in the row in front Didn't you, couldn't you just eavesdrop and find out what the options were and just make a note of it to make the job easier it's just you went to everyone wanted like a per, to personally be told what the options were and there were like eight or ten of them it was fucking hilarious so i can understand how so the reason why i bring this up is because i can see what it's like on the planes and i'm not even on direct flights there right so i can imagine i can only imagine what it's like with the direct flights and i can only imagine what it's like when they land at these places they must be turned to level 11 so i understand some of the concerns that these guys have with british tourists um it continues it says i've expressed the master's um lines and nothing rule being ruled out or confirmed at this stage then it'll need to have a legal framework it says um he told the di diario di abista um the main thing is to target companies as well but above all these people who behave in a way that is not tolerable and here or anywhere news um new laws introduced in some parts of balearics in 2020 in a separate bid to clamp down on badly behaved tourists on bills viewed holidays the decree banned happy hours free bars and two for one drinks parties that made it illegal to advertise pub crawls they've, they've got an interesting issue in it because you'd imagine a huge chunk a huge chunk of their kind of money that they make is basically based on tourist right they don't probably generate that much else outside of tourism season or maybe all year round from tourism so they probably have to tread a bit lightly they know these guys are a liability they know they're not the greatest advertisement of our country especially exports um they know they cause people hassle really maybe sometimes it's more hassle than what it's worth but by and you know the bottom line is these guys contribute to the bottom line the guys that go on pub crawls, the ones that want two for one drinks, happy hours, all these type of things, they're the ones that really go out there and spend, spend, spend. Because something is all you can't, you know, kind of begrudge British people for. We might be liabilities tourism wise, but we're also not people that are tight with our money when we do go out. When we do go out, like each person is spending probably a minimum of two hundred dollars or two hundred euros a night out, or maybe even a hundred euros, maybe each person, and it's usually groups of people. So imagine what that is times five times ten. It's crazy amounts. Um, the regional government also banned new licenses for party boats, while existing boats are banned from operating in design designated areas. Sorry. Meanwhile, shops selling alcohol that stay open all night were ordered to close between nine thirty p.m. and eight a.m. or risk fines of up to six hundred thousand or the threat of being closed down for three years. Torres. Court, court, sorry, tourists, tourists caught climbing on hotel balconies can be kicked out and face hefty fines. Um, the restrictions applied um, to the worst affected areas in Magaluf, El Arena del Plama in Mallorca, and Sant Antonio de Port, Man, de, de Port Mani in um, Ibiza. Ibiza's Balearic Islands, among some of tourism dependent regions, with the industry accounting a large part of the country's GDP. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because I also feel like part of the reason why this happens has to do a lot more with the restrictions out here in the uk i feel like because the uk is so far behind in terms of drug safety in terms of you know sensible um adult grown-up um, approaches to drinking and nightlife in general we're not really used to drinking and doing drugs and going out and having a good time it's hard to say this but we're kind of infantile in that approach because we have such a short window to party most places don't stay open past 3 a.m um let alone four or six or whatever it may be uh, most people don't leave their homes until maybe 9 10 11 um and then by the time you're going out you're probably already due to come back home in about three or four hours so you have to kind of get all you you know get as much as you can out of the night um god forbid if you have kids and you don't usually go out anyway so there's extra pressure to make it worthwhile because maybe you don't have the time the money to pay for childcare or whatever maybe don't be away from your kids too often 
person and now suddenly you're turning what could be just a random chill night out into okay this has to be project x and it doesn't need to be that but again the timings around it um the lack of infrastructure to allow you to get back home at a sensible hour all these type of things kind of affect um the situation that we have in the uk which is why sometimes i always think to myself especially in london maybe because the transport system is so good that's why i've always kind of thought to myself like i'm actually surprised we don't have as crazy high of drink driving offenses as we probably should considering how shitty our licensing laws are considering the tightness of the opening hours considering how you know drug addled and alcoholic you know of a country we are the fact that we don't have more people you know getting into serious serious um accidents um you know being intoxicated behind the wheel is an actual miracle maybe again it's the fact that there's ubers and taxis and public transport especially in most parts of london readily available and maybe smaller parts smaller towns outside london not so much but still that might maybe account for it not being as high as it should be but i really do think if we had more grown-up approach to drinking and going out maybe this wouldn't be an issue if people could actually go out and spend six to eight hours out and have a good time and pace themselves they wouldn't need to go to the Balearic islands and steam themselves and i think this is kind of a representative of what happens in clubs in clubs or in bars in london because they all close at the same time you have this weird purge i'm sure if you were to stand um you know at liverpool street around 3 a.m you see like hordes of people just flooding the streets all at the same time because there's no real staggered you know release or closing everyone closes at the same time they're pushing the limit right to the end so by the time everybody kind of fills out into the streets right um there's nowhere else to go because everybody's closed and people are drunk and you know high whatever they may be acting out they want to impress their other mates or people just around them they start engaging in such a behavior that leads to trouble police come the cycle continues but in other places where maybe the opening hours are a bit more lax or a bit more open a bit more free what ends up happening is that you have people leaving at all hours of the night because the bars are open a little earlier they, they're obviously closing way 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 later you have people being able to leave at one three four six eight nine ten a.m in the morning so that the 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 flow of people leaving isn't crazy there's not as much antisocial behavior on the street because people get to kind of like you know um de-steam themselves right um they get to have a little bit of a pre calm down in the actual club or the bar itself and then by the time they're on their way home all they want to do is sleep and you don't get that so that's why people probably decide when they go abroad okay we're gonna have it we're gonna fucking have it we're not playing any games let's fucking go and that's what probably basically leads to the trouble that they're actually having over there which is a shame but i guess again you know it takes effort it takes a little bit of self-reflection it takes a little bit of honesty to see that you know the issues that we are having are maybe created by the government as a mission they're obviously not going to do that so this issue will keep kind of happening again and again so i understand why the Balearic islands are like you know what we have to step in now because the uk government aren't doing what they need to do so i completely completely understand that